Readings YouTubers, Atari Leaf here with a hardware review. This will be my first hardware review that I've ever done. It was requested of me to do a kind of history um, and a little bit about the hardware for the Tandy Color Computer Series. I'm certainly no hardware expert, so I'll do my best. Uh, TRS-80, Tandy Radio Shack, a joint venture of the two companies. And the 80, I'm not sure what that means. It might be, it might refer to the fact that it came out in 1980. Again, don't quote me on that. This is the Coco, or original Coco 1. And by the way, Coco is just the first two letters of color computer. People, I've had people ask where that, that came from. It's just a pet name that people who use the computers came up with. This is a well-worn model. They started out with 4K, uh, but you could also get 16K units. This is a 16K unit. If you look at the back, you'll see the hookups upside down. Let's turn it around. There's your reset button there, your RF switch, your channel select, your plug for your cassette. Originally that you used a cassette recorder to load and save your programs. Your serial output, output and your two joysticks and there's your power switch. And on the side of course is where your cartridges go or your different program packs. And these ran on a version, believe it or not, of a Microsoft Basic, which was later augmented or replaced by a company called Microware once Microsoft got away from supporting the Tandys. But interesting little bit of t trivia, Microsoft was involved in the Tandy Color Computer. Uh, in 1983, they replaced them with the Tandy Color Computer 2, uh, which came with, uh, I believe, 16K. This is a 16K unit when they started and they, you could later get them as 64K models. Um, this one's been modified, as I said in my other video. This red LED light, power light, was put in by somebody else who owned this computer before. It has what's called a melted computer, and you'll see the difference, too, between the two the keyboards. This was called the chiclet design. Not very easy to type on. This was a little bit better, and it was later replaced, as you'll see, with the keyboard on the Coco 3. But the Coco 2 on the back, very similar to what we had before. Your reset, RF, channel select is up here, your cassette port, serial input output, your joysticks and your power switch, and your program pack cartridge slot on the side. Let's see, what else did I want to say? Not too much, I guess. And then in 1986, they came out with the Tandy Color Computer 3, which were standard with 128K which could be expanded to 512. This is a 512 unit. Now there are a few little additions on this one which make it the best to use, the most popular to use. In addition to your RF you have your video and audio outputs. And on the bottom, if you can see there, you could also plug in an RGB monitor. Other models didn't have that. Uh, there was some other hardware that, that worked well with the Coco. You had your multi-pack. Now what you did with the multi-pack is you plugged it into the side and it allowed you to plug into four different program packs into it. Gain cartridges or uh, the disc controllers, speech sound pack. And those were some of the hardware that came with it. it was a, there was a speech sound pack too. Um, modems of course, RS-232 packs. Your disc drive of course which came later. Oh, let's see, what else is there to say? And again, the keyboard here, different. This is the best keyboard that they came out with. Arrow keys here, you'll notice a little different here. The up and down arrows and the side to side arrows are on opposite sides. Here they're all clustered together. Also, there are two function buttons on this keyboard. And as I said, they came with, I'll show you on this Commodore monitor here. Oops, one second. Oh, never mind, there it is. Just took a while to come on. There's your basic that comes with it, extended color basic. And of course, if you had the disk drive plugged in, it would be a disk extended basic. And as I said, you can see it was licensed by Microsoft, and later Microware came in and added some features when Microsoft got out of it. Uh, I don't know what really else to say. Uh, they're great little computers. They were designed to compete with the Commodore 64s and of that day when the Commodore or the Color Computer 3 came out it was designed to compete with the likes of the Amiga um, 
the Atari ST, those kind of computers. The problem with the Coco 3, it was kind of similar to what happened to Atari. It was, it was, it was crippled purposely by Tandy so that it wouldn't compete too much with, with its more expensive Tandy 1000. Uh, and the Tandy, the Color Computer 3 also had a gimme chip for graphics and sound. And it came out later, which really helped too. Um, great little units. Uh, the games, some, it, some people not, might not like them. I, I really like them. I think this is a great computer. I used pretty much all three of these as a teenager, one by one. I had each model as they came out. Coco 3 by far the best, by far my favorite. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed the hardware review. If you have any more questions, make comments, and I'll see if I can answer your questions. Okay, thanks a lot, everybody. Have a great day.